Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of What Makes This Game Awesome. It's not a long wait until Final Fantasy XV comes out, so in the short wait for its release, I figured I should take my mind off it by speaking about another game. Attack on Titan. It's a great anime and I still read the manga today to see where the story's going. It's by far one of my favourite shows, so when I heard they were releasing an official AOT game, no, not the 3DS one, we don't talk about that, I was super hyped. Fast forward to today and I still find myself enjoying this game, so I felt I needed to make a video on it. That's right, today we're talking about Attack on Titan Wings of Freedom and what makes this game awesome. Wings of Freedom was announced in May 2016 for release on PS4, Xbox One, PS Vita and PC in August 2016. I picked myself up a copy the day it came out for PS4, and I played through the entire game in only a few days. So now that's out of the way, let's talk about the game. In short, if you like the AOT, anime and manga, you'll love the game. But if you didn't enjoy them, the game probably isn't going to make it any better for you. Let's get into the first section, and hopefully by the end of this video you'll see what I mean. Right, so let's start with the best part of the game, the gameplay. It's good. I played the tribute game and a bit of the 3DS game, and I have to say, this is by far the best Attack on Titan combat I've seen before. It feels fast and fluid, with massive maps giving you tons of space to fly around in. You fly around the map normally, like this, but you can also toggle R1, which locks onto nearby titans. From there, you pick the part of them that you want to attach to with the camera stick, fire a grapple and boost towards them to cut the part that you're locked onto. It's really well designed, as it means you have to be aware of your surroundings at all times, as it will cut the maneuver wires if you crash into a building or something. In general, missions revolve around killing titans, or protecting a place while making sure your comrades are all safe by helping them when they send up a distress signal. After meeting certain criteria, a final target will usually appear, which usually requires all of its limbs to be severed before you can kill it and finish the mission, which can get a little repetitive, but it didn't really get that bad for me, and there's bits of variation peppered throughout the story. Alright, but there are downsides to this combat system too. Firstly, these items. They're completely useless. Nearly. As you fly around, you can boost, which uses gas, but it also makes you faster and do more damage. When you run out, you have to replace gas canisters, which you get from these happy chappies. Same goes for blades. You also have ointment to heal you when you get hurt too much and to stop your character from limping. These all seem like pretty standard items and what I'd expect. But then you have all the other random and almost useless items. Titan flashbangs, molotovs, and other random stuff that almost ruins the mood for me. You can use it to make titans a little easier to hit, but it kind of goes against the point of using the maneuver gear, because it makes you better at using the gear if you just don't use these items anyway. The storyline is divided into missions, which you do in a specific order, but there are side missions that you can do if you want to make the story less linear. Overall, it's quite fun, but the main problem is that the missions can get very repetitive very quickly if you don't take some breaks when playing the game. There are plenty of other things in the game to keep you going much longer than when you've finished the story, including online play with friends, hundreds of side quests, although quite a lot of them feel quite similar, and also some collectibles to reward your efforts in the game. These include the obvious trophies, some costumes for characters, character models used in the game, just in case you needed a good look at Mikasa for <laughs> reasons, and collectible titan statues, including the female titan, and uh, this one, to avoid spoilers, that allows you to customise the look of your hub town by placing the statue in the middle of it. These are pretty cool, but not really worth playing all of the extra content for, and also the statues of titans that you put in your town seem like they would just scare people instead of being a memorial or something. So basically, the gameplay is solid, but there isn't too much variation, and while there's a lot of content in the game, it can start to drag, especially if you want to play the whole thing quickly. Now, for a lot of people, the story was a big selling point of the game. It was promised to tell the whole story of Attack on Titan up to the end of Season 1, which is where the anime ends, and it would all be told through gameplay and 3D rendered cutscenes, which I'll talk about more in the presentation section. And I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't actually expecting this to be that great. Luckily, I done fucked up. The cutscenes look really, really good and it does a great job of creating the mood felt at some key points in the anime. But the actual story told in the game is... Eh. 
It's told pretty well, but it can feel rushed sometimes. The main story lasted around 5-7 to seven hours, at least for me, and I was doing some of the side missions too. And while there's lots of extra stuff to do, it's very easy to quickly finish this game. The storytelling's good, it's just not as good as the anime, and as I was hoping for. So I don't think you can play this game and really feel the same way about the characters as you would if you'd watched the anime. It's not bad though, and if you need to really quickly catch up with the story, it actually could be quite a good way to do it. The main problem with the story in this game is that they quickly skip out major parts in the anime that help you get attached to the characters, so there's not really as much character development through the game as I think there should be. The side missions have basic stories, and they don't actually add anything important to the story, so there's not that much reason to play them, apart from extra gameplay. Overall, the story is okay, but it's not nearly as good as the anime, so if you're playing this game 100% for the story, then it really isn't worth it. The graphics are so, so, so good though. Take bacon, sleeping, video games, and any other good things, blend them up and you have the ultra good that is this game's graphics. The cell shading looks incredible, feeling almost exactly like the anime, which is really, really unusual for 2D to 3D conversion. I'm honestly so impressed with how this game looks, and running at a nearly constant 60fps, even on console, is absolutely insane for a game as big and free as this. The music's pretty cool, quite a lot like the music from the anime, but they didn't get a license for that one AOT song literally everyone knows, you know. The not shit version of that copyright free song I just played. It would have been really cool if they actually had been able to use the soundtrack to the actual anime, because I love that. But the one they have isn't that bad. Some of the tracks get a little repetitive if you stay in one place for a really long time, but the music in combat is incredible and keeps the pace up. The presentation never makes a game, but especially in this case, it really does help a lot. And I just love how this game is presented. So, with all the criticism that I've been giving it, some of you might be wondering why this is a what makes this game awesome. Well, despite some of its shortcomings, Attack on Titan Wings of Freedom is a solid game. I personally really enjoy playing it casually, and flying around with this amazing sense of freedom that you get. And it only starts to drag when you play it heavily for extended periods of time. It looks amazing, with a pretty good soundtrack and incredible gameplay that takes skill. The collectibles are decent, but admittedly not really worth putting loads of extra time into. And the story, while admittedly being a bit short and not getting you really attached to the characters, does cover the main points of Attack on Titan, and the bits of the anime that are covered are done very well. So that's why I do still have to call this game awesome, because the gameplay is impressive and rewarding, and I still have had hours of fun flying around the city, forest, and outside the walls, killing titans is my favourite characters from the anime. So to answer the question, the incredibly well managed gameplay and great graphics are what I think makes this game awesome. But it fell a little short in the storyline section, at least for me. I'd give this a 7 out of 10, and if the storyline had a little more time put into it, with more focus on getting you attached to the characters, this could easily have been one of my favourite games in a long time. Anyway guys, thank you so much for staying till the end of the video. I'm not going to add this to the mag list, because it really isn't one of my current favourite games, but it's still a really good game, and make sure to stick around till the end of my videos, because this list is going to update all the time. Thank you for watching, make sure to check out my social media, subscribe, and my other videos. See you next time!